meeting all kind of wonderful people. And this, of course, everybody knows I only talk to my very best friends. Thank so, you, Marcia. Thank so you that. this is the John Mizuno, and he is the vice chair of the House of Representatives. Now that's quite a title, John. Vice speaker. Thank you. I'm very vice fortunate. Vice speaker. Okay. Very fortunate to have that title. Thank you so much, Marsha Rose. And you are correct. We're good friends. We go back. Um, we have a lot of history, good history. And I just wanted you to uh, know that I, I'm very thankful for doing this live interview. So appreciate it. Well, now first tell us about what your job is. This looks like a big job. As you can tell by the mess on my desk, <laughs> we're running around all over the place. Um, the legislature in Hawaii, at least, is condensed in 60 legislative days. And so every day is going to be busy. We have sometimes 12, 14, 16 hour days. As vice speaker, I basically am the speaker's wingman. Now, today, speaker's not here, so I'm signing off on a lot of um, documents that he would normally sign on. Uh, if there are people that are coming from other countries to meet with the speaker and he's not here, I will be there. Even when he's here, I'm part of the leadership team, I'll be here. So I'm basically his second in command and I do my best to try to keep everyone together. Uh, sometimes there's some issues that come up and so we do our best to try to vet those out and make sure that everyone's happy and we're moving forward. Uh, knowing that, um, it's good to have debate. Debate is actually healthy and so I basically do that. It's a good job. I'm very fortunate to be the vice speaker. And again, I'm, I thank not only Speaker Suki, the leadership team, but all the members for voting me in. Uh, this is going to be my fifth year. Wow. And so I'm very fortunate. Um, but thank you for that, that question. Oh, well, now, before you were vice speaker, speaker. Uh, what else, what was your uh, jobs in the legislature? Well, I, I served four years as the chairman of Human Services. And I, again, um, in all modesty and only by the grace of God. That was when uh, former Director Kohler was trying to close the Department of Human Services. And so we fought them. We drafted a bill which would not allow them to stop the Department of Human Services. And that was one of our greatest accomplishments. We saved uh, 350,000 people from getting Medicaid because they would only have two call centers, one in Hilo and one on Oahu. And we don't think that they would have the ability to navigate through such complicated issues as food stamps, SNAP, Medicaid, um, public assistance, welfare assistance. And so that was one of our biggest accomplishments. Part of that, I served under Senator Green, who's, he was uh, Representative Green, as the Vice Chair of Health for two years. So, and did you, you worked in the legislature before you were elected? Correct. I worked as a staffer for four years. So I luckily okay. got to understand some of the ground game and and see how things work, the process and everything. And so that was very fortunate for me. So right now, this is a, an administrative job, but you're still the representative of what district? District 28, that's Kalihi Valley, Kamehameha Heights, and parts of Lower Kalihi. So that the constituents still treat you as just a representative, is that correct? Absolutely, at the end of the day, the constituents are my boss, they're my employer. Not only are we provincial leaders, I represent District 28, but we're statesmen too, which means the entire state we represent. So everyone in the state of Hawaii can rest assured that they are my boss. I listen to them. I'm a simple public servant. Wow. So now, uh, Kalihi, that's a big district. So that's back in the valley, is that? Correct. You've got North School Street all the way back into the valley. And we we go all the way up towards Mauna Loa, and then we go all the way to Hoftailing Street. So it's a pretty big district, um, and the people of our district are just really... Uh, good people, warm-hearted people, family-oriented. Um, I'm just fortunate to be the representative. Well, that's one of the oldest districts on Oahu, is it? Correct. Absolutely correct. And that's why when Governor Ige had talked about this 21st, Kalihi 21st Century Commission to work on um, community planning and how we see Kalihi in the next 20, 50, 70 years from now, uh, we look back at our old history of Kalihi being one of the oldest districts in the state. So, uh, and it's a historic district, so would that change? Yes, yes. With, we with, want to change? We do, but we want to do community planning right. And so you want to make sure you take into consideration the nonprofits, the specific things that are of value to Kalihi Valley. We have a number of community health centers. And we have some people that are of, um, we have a, a high rate of migrants. Um, we want to ensure their rights are represented and that with time and technology, we just don't bulldoze 
a new era in and forget about what made Kalihi great. So, speaking of medical centers, um, let's jump forward here. Since the majority of residents in the state of Hawaii live in rural areas, what are we doing to better take care of them in terms of medical care? We do, uh, sorry about that, we do telemedicine. That is where a doctor can go on the internet or laptop and work. We have some rural area um, buses that will go out. Uh, uh, KKV has Kukua Kalihi Valley, for example, Dr. Duroc. And I believe Kalihi Palama Health Center also have, have these uh, rural buses that can actually go out to the people that need the help. 